Hi, in this video I'm going to talk about the requirements engineering process and overview of it. Now, let's start with the IEEE standard 610.12, that's the IEEE standard glossary of software engineering terminology. For those of you who don't know, the IEEE is one of the largest body, professional bodies in the computer science industry and they would dictate uh, a lot of these kinds of requirements, uh, a lot of these kinds of definitions for uh, terminology. So they say that a requirement is a condition or capability needed by a user to solve a problem or achieve an, obje an objective to a condition or capability that must be met or possessed by a system or a system component to satisfy a contract, standard, spec, or other formally imposed document. Or three, a document representation of a conditional capability other than one or two. So that means you, gotta you have to write it down. You have to remember that a statement of a customer feature want is not necessarily the same as the user's task related needs. So when you capture, if you end up just going to requirements, um, a requirements solicitation process and just ask the customer what you want, that's actually a very bad idea because what you're going to end up getting is a whole bunch of things that, that are important to somebody, but it won't necessarily solve their, their problem. In fact, the second worst question you could probably ask is what is a requirement because they don't necessarily have the information to actually answer that. Again, you could just capture a whole bunch of random and amalgamation of information that's not necessarily going to solve their problem. In fact, what you have to do is you have to focus on the customer and what is the customer actually doing on a day-to-day -day basis. You have to figure out what their problem actually is. So focus on them rather than what necessarily they want it, it's about them. So why is this an important thing? Well, you have to uh, remember that you may have different classes of users, lots and lots of different kinds of users, and this might be a broad base, not necessarily just the users in within your organization that is actually creating it. You have people with different agendas and objectives, say the sales team as opposed to the tech team, as opposed to the managers and so on and so forth. Uh, there are a lot of different stakeholders, including people from a legal background, um, domain experts and that kind of thing. Each of these persons have something spe specific to say about the project that you're going to work on and because they have so many contrasting views what tends to happen is that everybody tries to pull the project in different ways. So the requirement process is all about getting everybody aligned and everybody focused behind a single set of um, deliverables that at the end of the process we know what, what we're going to create at the end so we know what that end product looks like and you don't want to end up getting yourself into some kind of legal um, problems because uh, at the end you know you you want to know that you can deliver what you're promising and everybody is clear that this is in fact what the end goal is and this is this is you have in fact lived up to your end so that being said, I'm going to talk about three levels of requirements. So at the top level, you're always going to start with the business requirements. The business requirements are captured in, a, say, a vision and scope document. Business requirements answer the why. Why are we going to do this? Why are we going to build this particular product? What's going to differentiate us from someone else? Why is there a need? What are we, what are we doing this for? You know. Um, a lot of the times the information that's captured in a vision and scope document isn't good enough to be able to see what to build but it's actually going to inform you uh, why we're actually going to do this and it may help you differentiate yourself from someone else now at the next level of requirements you have the user requirements and you have domain requirements user requirements are all about capturing the feature set and what um, the type what are the types of things that the users need to be able to do we have to capture their needs and then we also have to capture what is called the domain requirements that is about the application space so let's say you're building a medical database perhaps there is a ethical standard or there is a legal standard that says that well you know this, this information has to be protected by certain security features and you can't share the information between subsystems in certain ways or something like that. This kind of information is captured in what you call a requirements definition document. Some people call this a user requirement specification document. And the problem with documents such as this is that sometimes the requirements here yeah, are a little bit interpret open to interpretation. So what you need to do is drill them down even further 
and when you drill them down, usually the differentiating factor between this and what you call functional requirements and non-functional requirements is that functional and non-functional requirements are actually testable. I.e. when you go and read that, somebody has a clear idea of, okay, if I've built this, this is what the test case might look like in order to test and I can actually demonstrate that I have achieved this. Functional requirements are all about um, what the software is going to do uh, whereas non-functional requirements capture some other types of information which I'm going to talk about just in a moment and these kinds of requirements are all captured in a software requirement a software requirement specifications document and that is perhaps the last document that you create in um, your requirements process and you hand over to the, say, the design team at the end to move forward so just to touch based on what non-functional requirements are there are a lot of dimensions to non-functional requirements you have product requirements organizational requirements and external requirements product requirements include things like efficiency usability how well is it going to perform what kind of security standards i need to actually implement and that kind of thing organizational requirements might include things like um, how is this going to interact with the environment what about uh, operational requirements or development requirements and these kinds of things needed by the organization as a whole. External requirements to you might be um, your regulators, legal, legislative requirements, safety and security requirements, accounting requirements, um, any kind of ethics, these kinds of considerations that you need to have going into um, your software. Now this is a very broad spectrum of things. Uh, I just hope to get a sense of the kinds of areas you need to go and look at in order to um, look for these kinds of non-functional requirements that go alongside your software. Um, so that being said, um, what I want to focus in on last in this particular set of slides is that requirements should emphasize what while design should emphasize how. So uh, let, let's look at the abstraction as you progress through, as you progress through the set of steps to re the life cycle. So the first set of things that you're going to do is probably going to look at why are we going to undertake this project, project, and that's the business requirements that captured in the vision and scope document. That answered why, which is in itself a kind of what. So what what is the reason we're actually going to be doing this project? So you see, you now we're moving along with some what. So what will the user be able to do with the product at the end of the day? So here you get into like use cases, scenarios, so stories, and so on that captain in the user requirements spec or the requirements definition document. So you know we're really focusing on what will the user be able to do with the product at this stage and focusing on the user and their needs. And then what we have to do is then kind of drill that down a bit more and be like what is the developer going to build at the end of the day so what are those features what are the functional requirements and the product characteristics and you capture those kinds of information in, a, in an SRS then you kind of start to switch modes after this year instead of just dealing with what you, you're now dealing with how you know what are the system components and how do they fit together so you, we're trying to think about okay how are we going to accomplish this so we're talking about um, the product architecture and the UI architecture and you try and capture that in a design architecture type document and then you know we're, we're going full-blown design mode so how will all those individual components behave and we're actually going to talk about a more detailed module class design the database design how the user interfaces are going to be designed and you capture all that in a more detailed design document and then you know you further further drill down into how will each component be implemented um, you know all the algorithms and the pseudocode and that kind of thing again in the same detailed design document that we talked about so you see a kind of move move from what into how moving from requirements into design it's not always a very um, defined boundary between two but you know you really need to understand that requirements needs to emphasize the what as opposed to the how. Don't get bogged down in thinking about the how during the requirements phase because you don't want to end up painting yourself at the corner and you know you lock yourself into a specific way of doing the design. You lock yourself into certain design constraints and this kind of things. You want to be able to say that okay at the end of the requirements we've considered exactly what the person wants 
and we're going to now consider in the design phase after the requirements is now done okay how are the what are all of the different kind of options that we're going to have to actually design this because there might be more than one way to do it but if you had done in the requirements phase you know lock yourself into particular design by thinking about design back then you know without actually fleshing out the idea plenty you would you would actually end up with a specific way of doing design when you reach design stage when you should really be thinking about a whole that bunch of different trade-offs as to okay here a whole bunch of different ways we can do this design now and um you know you, you have a, a richer methodology and you know you don't you don't lock yourself in as much so you, you, you need to really keep that in mind when you're creating requirements okay so that's really it for this particular video i guess i'll see you in the next one where i'll be talking more about the process that you go through in order to actually capture this uh, these requirements okay take care bye